you uh produce a podcast about horror movies is that right well action and horror but uh we i also try to like lean into skepticism in it because Mm -hmm. i'm friends with a lot of people within the horror communities and i've noticed their epistemology is terrible a lot of them believe in ghosts a lot of them believe in cryptids good people but just like they'll believe anything they hear so i've i've been trying to like lean into the skepticism a little bit even also pushing the atheism where that's uh appropriate for me to be open about that we even had an episode where uh my co-host was talking about exorcisms that his uh grandfather performed in front of him so like oh man we've gone off off on some weird tangents into the world of skepticism into the world of weird christianity rituals and shit like that i mean i just imagine that people who are into the horror genre in general are kind of just probably as a rule more open to the supernatural right well, it, like it's weird though like you do see like uh seth andrews t- drops the uh, horror knowledge all the time on uh, his page so there are skeptics that can appreciate horror and just like I like dissecting where I would go, where I'd be in a horror movie or true, where I'd start believing that something supernatural is happening. Like, right. Uh, there's oh, everybody always gets mad at the, the angry sp- spouse. that's not believing the wife right away when she says she saw a ghost in her room. Cause the uh, most, I, I would most likely be that guy saying like your imagination was probably playing with you. I've done ghost hunting when I was younger and uh, less of a skeptic. And I, there are some things that I had believed that I had seen before. And I look back at it with a skeptical mind and I'm like, no, you you saw like a shadow move, but you haven't gone into like all the the places, all the reasons for why that had happened. You just automatically you're in that frame of mind that says that was a ghost or that was a shadow creature or something like that. Right, so like, right. You learn I to mean, watch horror movies differently. Yeah, yeah. I was ne- I've never I've never been a big horror guy, but when I was a kid, I was really into the ghost hunting stuff. Like I looked at those ghost hunting shows with awe because i was like oh yeah some of that's probably not real but like how do you explain that audio what that's crazy and i didn't understand how like post-production worked and stuff like that but uh well, like know. we did an episode on the movie grave encounters which ta- it's, it's fake it's found footage from m- movie but uh it still talks about the ghost hunting equipment and stuff like that and the biggest pushback i got from people was me talking about how yes all that equipment does do something there is some scientific uh work done into the equipment but it's not scientific work towards going towards ghosts it does exactly what it's programmed to do like there's the the ghost box or spirit box that is programmed to find like radio signals and like it'll keep searching back and forth for a a response that works towards what you said that showed up in the movie and i said that that's that's all bold there's no reason to believe that that was a ghost it's cool like uh they my friend who uh who said he got a response from it uh, he said that it responded to whiskey, which you're going to find whiskey ads on the radio that you're going to pick up. And it like happened to correspond with uh, what he had been asking the ghost about, which I don't know why you're asking a ghost about whiskey. Maybe they know, maybe they died knowing the good maybe, whiskey to drink for. Yeah. Maybe they're, they're just, they, that's their hobby. And they knew about that. I don't know, man. I, I, I would love it if more people asked me about my opinions of whiskey instead of some of the questions people ask me, but you know, we, we don't get to choose these things. Right. But Anyway, Josh, you you uh you're you're an aficionado of movies. You can even see your movies right now in in the back here. I, I want to talk to you because you know today today is Good Friday. I, I don't know if you know that. Did you know today was Good Friday? I had to be reminded. I it was a so so Friday, honestly. It's you know, a fair point. It is Good Friday. I don't know why they said, "Hey, you know the time our Lord and Savior died and got tortured. Let's call that the Good Day." Uh, well, did did the, we check his thumbs on the cross? He might have been giving thumbs up while it was happening. So I, maybe like, so. I don't good know. I, I, guess, I guess it's good for humanity, but like not good for him. Regardless, right? It's Good Friday. I want to talk about like some some Christian movies in particular. We we don't talk a lot about movies on this show, but you have done a few episodes on some Christian movies that you've seen, and two two in particular that interest me. One of them being the very famous God's Not Dead, <laughs> the other one being the Left Behind series. So I want I want to talk about Left Behind for a second first. Tell me tell me what you know about Left Behind for those who don't know. Well, Left Behind is a series about the Rapture, and I w- this is an episode that was not part of my regular podcast. Sorry, my dog's going off right now. This this was a, a team up I did with a Skeptic Takeout where we were able to go off genre and talk about 
Christian movies. And Left Behind is the movie that I've talked to most of my ex-Christian friends saying that it was the, the movie in the book series that scared them to death. Because for me, I've never been religious, so I read it in just terrible propaganda preaching 90% of the time, like very much of a, a man looks at a woman and, and he's committed uh, adultery in his brain just because of, she looks so damn fine to him and stuff like that. And then the movie was worse somehow. Like it was Kirk Cameron could not bring himself to be the adulterous guy or, or at least the guy that thought about adultery. So he made himself the news reporter, even though he was more of a secondary character in the book. And the whole thing is, basically them trying to make themselves become better per people now that the raptures happened and they're going to have to join the tribulation force for what's coming ahead because the the antichrist is is going to reign and the the signs of the antichrist are something that you constantly see in the real world people are like oh this leader's talking about peace that's somehow a leader talking about peace is a sign of the antichrist so like you can point that out to any leader that's yeah. ever done a speech before yeah and it's just yeah. like I I, I want to rewind a bit, okay? Because you like you read this book and thought, "Oh, this is garbage," right? Like this isn't worth people's time. I read Left Behind when I was a kid, and I didn't actually realize there's a difference between the main Left Behind series and there's a Left Behind series called literally Left Behind the Kids, where it's just about young adults like in the rapture. And that's the one I read. It was in my elementary school teacher's like little books that you could check out. Uh, in her classroom and i read a couple of those but there's like there's 20 of those things i i only read a couple of them but that no, no there's me. there's 40 of the kids books and there's, there's 15 crazy. of of the main series oh there's man a... they made bank off that that's crazy oh, but look it's... look look i read these books josh and this freaked me the fuck out okay because i'm a i'm a young christian boy at this time and i'm thinking well obviously people have different takes on theology right but like th this was supposed to be like kind of what to expect like this was somebody's fiction i i just assumed well they read the bible they must know what they're talking about with all this stuff and man this stuff is scary if you like don't know how to distinguish fiction from reality right like it's 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 you know well most people can't distinguish fiction from reality uh That's movies true. can constantly put based on a true story for something that was like inspired by something like texas chainsaw yeah. that was inspired by somebody in wisconsin so that's how how loose it has to be for it to be a true story that's true but i'm talking about when i'm eight years old here okay and like i'm also going to church and hearing about this thing called the end times and thinking oh man there's going to be like scorpion beasts and stuff like what the fuck yeah, like, it, it would be scary if you believe this. If I, I luckily had a Christian mom and a Jewish dad, and they were going to let me choose which religion uh, made most sense to me, and neither of them did, so I just stayed an atheist. So I never got like indoctrinated on all this stif stuff. So I can, I can see it's bull. It's just like a really poorly written story with probably like one good scene at the end, and then even the movie messed up the one decent scene in it. So like. It's bad propaganda, but if, if uh, your parents are only giving you, as I know, I've had a lot of religious friends that they could only watch certain movies. So you're not even like aware of the fact that you're watching propaganda. You think you're watching, yeah. you're watching like a truly good film. And if you haven't seen enough films, your taste is terrible. So it's going to be scary for you. Sure. Sure. I, I mean, I, I've never actually seen the movie. I know Nicolas Cage is in it. Which well, is no, fascinating. That, we we did the Kirk Cameron one because I'm actually okay. saying, oh yeah, a, that's right. I'm, I'm a huge. There's different ones. Explain the difference there, because I don't know oh, if everybody knows. I'm that. a huge Nicholas Cage one fan, so I, I I'm saving that for when we do it. Cover it on my podcast, but this was a crossover I did. So we did the Kirk Cameron one, which uh, Kirk Cameron uh, decided, unlike Nicholas Cage, just decided not to play the lead character in the book, which is Rayford Steele. A, badass name for a lead character in a terrible story i think he just worked the story around it but that the main focus on that is he's been lecherous and has wanted to to have an affair never has an affair just thinks about it and then uh he and the rapture happens his wife and uh one of his ch children is raptured and then like his one daughter that has a lip ring she's the only one that stayed or stayed down uh, on earth with him and he has to convince her to accept Jesus Christ now that uh, they understand that the end times is coming and they're going to join up a tribulation force to 
uh, go against the Antichrist. The worst part about it, and this is what scares uh, most of my Christian friends, is there's a character who's a pastor who didn't believe the right way, so he didn't get raptured. So it's very much getting you. You need to believe exactly how you tell how we tell you, or else you're gonna you're not gonna get raptured into heaven. Yeah, I mean that is really fucked up because that's a very like American way of viewing Christianity. I feel like, because I, I, well, I mean, it's evangelical in particular, but American evangelicalism and, um, you know, Western evangelicalism really talks about, you know, Hey, you have to spread the literal word of God, the word being the good news, you know, and, oh, that Jesus has died and you know, accepting your heart. And if you don't, you will go to hell. Like that is the aftermath. If you've never heard of God, it's a, it, it, your status is kind of up in the air. Cause like well, limbo is not a thing for most Protestants. And if you're, if you're not saved, you're not saved. So it's, well, it's they're going to have a chance. They, there's going to have a chance after the end times have happened, after everybody's been ratcheted to like, see, there was proof. Everybody's clothes is on the ground that now uh, you, you see that God exists, it's, but still somehow uh, everybody's still going up against it. And right. Uh, but also like not believe it. <laughs> when you have people like just immediately leaving their clothes from like cars and planes and stuff like people are going to die who aren't believers like very oh, soon after it happens so i don't know if that's a great second chance i don't know if that gives a lot of people enough time to like fully evaluate what's happening well in the book they do in in the movie they do talk about how uh uh people are gonna die but as long as they're dying believing and fighting for it that uh they they may have a chance to uh redeem their souls or whatever so like it's it's very hard up on the propaganda but it's just like and honestly if, if you take out the religious elements and just half the population disappearing it's a very good movie it was called endgame so like uh there was yeah th there was a way to make this interesting and they still somehow but made the most boring story endgame ever made Josh, Endgame had Iron Man, okay? Left Behind has uh, Kirk Cameron. <laughs> I mean, like, one of those is just inherently going to be more entertaining than the other. I don't know. Like, I, I'd be curious to watch these movies to see how I feel about it because I've never seen any of the Left Behind movies. But if they're like the books, um, which I can now evaluate as, like, garbage, I'm sure they're not super great. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad I can get your opinion well on that like the cgi yeah. even for the time was pretty terrible so it's just like even from just like a special effects standpoint writing standpoint i i do think that there's a way to make religious movies and make them entertaining uh this wasn't one of them exorcist is a religious movie uh, william peter blatty wrote that to be propaganda to get people into catholicism and that ended up being a great movie it was all bull but uh, at least you can yeah. you can you can build off of Christianity for interesting stories as long as you have a uh, good the exorcist, direction. It is the Exorcist a Christian movie though? It one hundred percent is a Christian movie. But, okay, yeah, I guess so. Well, the, the, the mother, characters. the mother, but no, like, the mother was an atheist, and then that, right. by the end of it, she definitely believes because uh, they've given her proof that the devil is real or or Captain guess, Howdy is real. I guess it is because like uh, like even okay. I think this is fair to say. I don't think this is a hot take at all, because even when I was a Christian, I thought this pretty much 99, 95% of Christian movies are just garbage, right? Yeah. Like they're, they're just not worth anybody's time. So like when I think of the exorcist, which is actually like an entertaining film, I don't think of it as a Christian movie, but I guess it kind of is though, huh? You can, have, you can have creative people with poor beliefs and yeah. like, you you get good actors in it and then you make something happen. The book for Exorcist is amazing. Uh, I wasn't as much of a fan of the sequels because he's very much into just uh, releasing propaganda after propaganda about uh, Catholicism and like eventually uh, all the good ideas are out after you've made the Exorcist. I think. Yeah, yeah, which is funny because I I remember Left Behind being controversial because like um there are a lot of catholics that said that the catholics in that book were left behind <laughs> and did not get to go to heaven which is just great when you have these kind of like inter interfaction conflicts with these things but real quick i want to talk about this because we, we got to get to calls in just a second but i i also want to talk about god's not dead now here's the thing we do not have enough time to talk about god's not dead because god's not dead in my opinion is the epitome and somebody made fun of me because i say epitome sometimes instead of epitome but i that's just because how i read it but it, it, it's isn't it epitome. an epitome it is epitome i just i always read that word and i never say it out loud and i say it as epitome okay so you can sue me all right language english is bullshit but look 
I think it's the epitome of Christian films. Like, if I was to show somebody, like, what Christian films are, I would show them that one. If only because, like, it actually has real arguments that people think. Like, just, just laid out. Like, there's characters in that movie. For those of you who aren't familiar, God's Not Dead is about a character. His name is Joss Whedon. Yeah, they're not the very they're not very creative with their names Which is in Christian movies. Very weird because has nothing to do with the real life Joss Whedon. But like well, name Joss it's Whedon. Josh Whedon. Oh, that's right. It's Josh, Josh Whedon. Whedon. Excuse me. They, right. they do they do lazy Whedon. they do lazy changes uh, in it. You're absolutely right. Okay, it's Josh Whedon. I don't know if they, there's a connection there. Um, basically has a standoff with Kevin Sorbo, um, who is an atheist professor, and this professor is literally making them like sign a document that says like God is not real. And then he spends like the rest of the semester debating this professor about whether God is real or not. And so it's interesting because in most films that are Christian based, I feel like, you know, the hackneyed kind of narrative is kind of built into the story itself. But there's not like a lot of like, I don't know, arguments being made because like, why would you? You're watching a movie. But this one, like because it's the plot is part of the arguments, right? Like they're kind of one in the same. It, it serves two purposes. One, it's supposed to entertain you, which it's it's only it's entertaining to me because how ridiculous it is. But it also like is propaganda in and of itself. Right. Because it kind of gives that Christian narrative and Christian, you know, well, it, point it, of view give, it gives the straw man that uh, so many Christians like to have about atheists is we do believe, but we just are angry at God. That's that's what a lot. Right. I hear that call all the time. And Kevin Sorbo uh, eventually admits he he. Uh, hates God because it took his his mother away from him. Right. He yeah. They literally do the trope in that movie of well, I'm I'm literally just mad at God because something happened to me in my personal life, which is very and, interesting. But and I just mentioned I'm an atheist without having any trauma. It's like we yeah, do exist. Yeah. It, there's a lot wrong with that movie. I didn't see it in theaters when it came out when I was still a Christian because I I didn't care about Christian movies then. But I remember getting texts from people at the time saying. God's not dead because there's a little thing oh, the, at the end of the credit. If you, you don't believe that this is a propaganda circles? movie, at the end of this movie, okay, they tell you send a message to ten of your friends saying God's not dead and see who and who keeps the chain going, you know. And uh, I, I I got a couple of messages from that. I was back. wondering if anybody got that because they're like I have I Christian did. friends that that love that movie, which I find so weird because they like me, but apparently I'm like part of the evil group of atheists and i'm very mm. open about it in my life i'm in southern california and i think i can get away with it but uh they they hear all these horrible things about atheists and also muslims and that it's very like it's very much if you're not christian you're kind of a bad person kind of yeah, a movie basically and uh yeah. I, I never got one of those texts. None of my yeah, friends there wanted is to some weird me. Muslim commentary in that movie too, which uh, the, the movie's full of just weirdness. The 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 freaking duck people are in there. Duck Dynasty people yeah. are in there. It's it's. I say if you have never seen a Christian movie in your life and you're curious about what Christian movies look like, those two movies are good ones to start with. But I'm I'm especially fond with God's Not Dead. I, I that movie is just is just really just out of its mind. I don't that, know. That one it seemed like somebody watched a Truth Wanted episode and wrote down down all the the bad Christian arguments. They're like, yeah, these make sense instead of just like seeing how all the fallacies that were brought up to them because it, all their arguments are fallacious in it. And the, even the worst part of it is uh, Kevin Sorbo gets saved because uh, uh David A. R. White couldn't get his car working for three days and then he ends up hitting kevin sorbo with the car when he finally does get it or oh yeah because that's god's divine spoiler, intervention. Sp I, I guess spoiler alert now for anybody yeah. who hasn't seen it the the atheist character literally gets hit by a car but he gets saved <laughs> like he, kevin sorbo's like struggling to breathe and then david ar white is there to preach at him while he's dying which would be like the worst way to die but apparently they film that as a good thing christians you yeah. find somebody having a heart attack at a restaurant make sure that you're they, right on top of them get preaching your christian Christianity. they literally yes like it, it sounds like you're making a joke it sounds like you're making an over exaggeration they literally just preach at this man who is dying they do not give him medical attention it is yeah. ridiculous they, they, they they're like him. oh he's already gone it's too late it's like how the, how the fuck do you know excuse me <laughs> that, that guy was what? not a doctor he was another preacher he <laughs> yeah he takes a look at him he's like oh he's dead like he, he he probably just broke his ribs get him like call 911 don't just like preach yeah at him. 
very anyway i, I you know i i don't want to be those people that talk about movies that you haven't seen and it's like well i don't know what's going on you have to see you have to at least see that movie i i i recommend it just for research purposes to see and and i would challenge you what what kind of counter arguments would you make to the character uh josh whedon makes in that movie because they're also not great but unfortunately we, we don't really have time to go into the mail we do have to get to some calls